So I finally learned how to send data from the Nexion display to the Arduino board. It was complicated because I had to use the Nexion library and it's hard to understand. For that reason, I'm going to show a few examples and explain every part of the code so you can use it as a guide for your projects. If you're not familiar with the Nexion editor or you just want to send data from the Arduino to the display, I recommend you watch my first tutorial. So let's get right into it. Okay, you should load my example project on the Nexion editor and select your display in here. To start with, let's do something simple. In this case, we have this button and you have to decide if you want to send a press event or a release event. In this case, I want this button to turn on the internal LED when I press it and turn it off when I release it. So I need to send a press event and a release event. To do that, check the corresponding boxes here. Now let's go to the Arduino code. First, I'm going to show you the main sections of this sketch that you need to make it work with the Nexion library. At this point, we are only going to focus on the button we just talked about. Uh, you need to add the library. Obviously, you should have the Nexion library in the library folder. By the way, I added a bunch of comments like this on the entire sketch to help you understand everything. Later, you can take your time to read it. These are simple variables that we're going to need later, but we don't need them for the button, so ignore them for now. Okay, here's the first important section. We have to declare every single object that we're going to read from the display. This includes buttons, text, and everything. But you don't have to include objects that we're going to send to the display. Only include the ones we are going to receive. Here you put the type of the object. In this case, it's a button the name of the object, which is right here. Again, mention the type of the object, the page where the object is on, the ID of the object, which for this button is 9, and the name of the object. Ignore the rest because that's for later. The second important section is the list of touch events. You need to put the name of the objects that are going to send a touch event. Here's my B1 button and ignore the rest. On this section we are going to put the code of what we want to do for every single touch event. First you put the object name, push callback for press event or pop callback for release events. We are using both events for this button so I created a function for each. When we get a press event, we turn on the LED on pin 13. And when we get a release event, we turn off the LED. Ignore the rest because those are for other objects. Now we are on the familiar setup section. Obviously we have to start this serial communication. By default, the next display has a baud rate of 9600. In here what I do is change it to a faster rate. You don't have to, but I recommend you use this bit. On this section, we have to include every single touch event, but this time we have to specify if it's a press event or a release event. For the B1 button, we use both, so we have to create a line for each. You have to write the name of the object in here, and include this for press events or this for release events. Now in the main loop, we only need this line. And now we are done. And everything I mentioned repeats for every touch event you want to add. For example, let's go to the beginning of the sketch and see another button I added. Here it says the name of the button is B0. It's on page 0 and have an ID of 1. Let's see that on the next project. Here it is. And for this button, I only send a press event. And let's see what that button does. It says that it's going to take the counter variable that I created on the beginning of the sketch and it's going to subtract one. And we send that value to the object called N3 and attribute called VAL. And here it is. Same for the plus button, but this time we add one. Now let's do something a bit more complicated. 
This time we have a dual state button and we want to read in what state is in every time we release the button. So we check this box to send a release event. We need to include this button on every section I mentioned before, like we did with the previous button. But this time in the function section we are going to read the value of the button with this line and store it on this variable. So if the variable is equal to 1, we turn on the LED. Else, we turn off the LED. With the slider, we do the same as with the dual state button. But this line is repeated because I have a problem with the slider sometimes gave us 0 instead of the correct value. So I check if it's 0, read again the value of the slider. I'm not sure why it happened, but this was my solution. But the interesting part of the slider is that I set it to send a release event every time the slider moves. So that's why it reacts in real time. I did this by putting this code on here and here. What this code does is exactly the same as what this checkbox does in the release event. But this time we are sending the release event when we press the slider and when we move it. You can see it more clearly in here. This number is showing the slider value because I created a timer that runs every 50 microseconds that writes the value of the slider into the number box called N1. The timer also changes the color of N0 if the value is over 99. Else, set the color to black. And the timer also increases the value of N2 by 1 until it reaches 1000 which will reset it to 0. Now let's go to the next page and see the waveform. On the loop, I'm sending the variable 1 to the waveform with this code. And you may notice that I'm sending that value only if the display is on page 1. The reason is that every time you send a value to a non-existent object on the current page, the display sends an error message and that slows down the Arduino loop. For that reason, I want the Arduino board to know in what page the display is on. To do that, I put this code on every page to send a press event every time we load a page. It's the same kind of instruction we put on the slider, but this time is for each page. So Arduino receives that press event and writes the page number into the variable I created on the beginning of the sketch. And with that information I can send data only to the objects that are in the current page. For example, if it's on page 0, we send this text to the object called T1. If it's on page 1, send data to the waveform. And if it's on page 2, send data to the progress bar and gauge. By the way, the difference between the checkbox and the radio is the shape. They work exactly the same. I put this as a selector, just as an example of what you can do with a few lines of code. So to read text, you need a buffer. And when an event happens, which in this case is the B22 button, reads the text on the object called T5 and send it to object T23. Same for the other two buttons, but they read a different text. An important tip is that you need to keep in mind that every time you delete an object, that might change the ID of the remaining objects on that page. It's very annoying and so many times I have a problem where the buttons stop responding just because I deleted an object on that page. So if you delete an object, you need to check the ID of the remaining objects on that page to make sure it matches the ID on the Arduino sketch. Another annoying thing is that you can't use software serial with the NextGen library. When I tried, it sometimes missed touch events, so I don't recommend it. Using software serial would be nice because right now I have to unplug the blue cable every time I want to upload the sketch, since we are using the same serial port and it will create a conflict. 
Also, it would be handy to have the hardware serial free for debugging. You can use the software serial for the display if you are only going to send data to the display. In that case, it does work and you don't need the Nexion library anyway. Another tip, try to avoid overlapping objects because they can cause flickering. Also, use the right click on the mouse to select objects, not the left click. And I suppose that's it. For the next video, I'm going to explore the features of the enhanced version, like the real-time clock and the EEPROM. I hope it's helpful, and let me know in the comment section what kind of projects you are going to make with the Nexion display. Good luck, and see ya!